Hello everybody, welcome back. First time back at EBTV studio in over a year and a half, it's crazy. But we're very proud to be able to present the 40th anniversary New Jersey Film Festival as a hybrid festival this fall, 2021. We will be having live screenings at Rutgers University in our state-of-the-art facility, which is Voorhees Hall, room 105 on the uh, College Avenue campus in New Brunswick, New Jersey at 71 Hamilton Street. And for the price of your ticket, you get to have the choice to do one or both. You can come to see the movie if, on our big screen at Voorhees at 7 p.m. on the evening of the show date, or you can watch it virtually, and you'll have 24 hours to watch all of the programs. The festival will be taking place between September 10th and October 10th, and we have 11 programs that will be taking place over the course of that time on Friday and Sundays. This is the beginning of our filmmaker interview series. There'll be a number of them. And today we have two wonderful and very talented women here to talk about our festival opener, which is called The Nine O'Clock Whistle. We have Willa Colefield and Karen Riley. They're co-directors of this film, which is a very important and timely documentary uh, about something that used to take place back in the 60s in Infield, North Carolina. Uh, tell us how you got involved in making this film, Willa. Well, I wanted to retell a story about events that occurred in the town that I grew up in and lived in for many years in North Carolina, Infield, North Carolina. These things took place back in the 60s, where black people for years had suffered a many humiliating and uh, demeaning uh, things had happened to us. And the most serious one, perhaps the one that the film focuses upon, was the blowing of a whistle on Saturday nights at nine o'clock. And it was a signal to all the black people to go home. So the film shows how at, after the March on Washington, the community rebelled against this particular act. And from that point on, a lot of things happened that empowered the black community politically and socially. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I, as I mentioned to you before, the timeliness is with all of the voting restrictions and kind of going back to these Jim Crow laws, mm -hmm. uh, restrictions that we had back in the 60s are rearing their ugly head again in the 21st century. And I, and I, I think it was worse then, right? Do you agree? It was certainly worse. There were things happening then that are not happening now, but in some ways the things that are happening now are more serious in terms of changing the vote and being in control of the vote, the yeah. suppression. I mean, they would, they would use uh, all sorts of scare tactics to get people not to go to Abs vote. Correct? Absolutely. Hardly anybody in our town voted in uh, 1965. If I remember from the documentary, 95% of the white people were registered and only 15% <laughs> yeah, of the black people were. Yeah, so absolutely. that tells you about the disparity. But I think with the, the change in the civil rights movement that people wanted to register to vote. Yes, well, people wanted to register even then, but they were afraid yeah. and they were restricted. So. Yeah, but less and less so, they felt more empowered. So how did you guys end up working together, Karen? How did you end up working with Willa? <laughs> uh, I came on the project in 2017. I have to thank my mother because she is the one who was speaking with Cousin Willa and um, that's how we got together. We are cousins and we right. um, <laughs> finally found out how. how? <laughs> yeah, so it's, I always call her Cousin Willa. It's, it's right. the way, it, it's just a, a family. That's yeah. very endearing. Yeah. I must say, though, Willa, you are the oldest filmmaker that's ever been selected to show at the New Jersey Film Festival. Oh, really? Willa's 92 years old. Yeah. And she looks amazing, and she's so and, incredible. And, and almost 93. And almost 93, <laughs> wow. I mean, we did have one film, we showed an eight-year-old's film 
many, many years ago, and uh, Emma Kenny, and she's now a Hollywood actress. Oh. And she got her beginnings at our festival, so we're oh. very proud to be able to have yeah. these two milestones that are uh, at our programs. Because yeah. as, as you know, we are celebrating our 40th anniversary. It's wonderful. I started this back in 1982 yes. as a graduate student. Oh, my goodness. So, but anyway, your film is also m brings up a number of issues that I learned about and primarily the fact that folks could not run for office or they were discouraged from running right. for office right. but that has changed dramatically in Enfield over the course oh, of the last so. few decades. Yes, when my husband ran for office mm. in 1963 everyone said that's the first black person that's ever run for a political office in Enfield but of course we didn't know that there had been a black congressman hmm. who had actually lived in Enfield. Yeah, but you back in 1888. But you got you guys got threatened so many different ways, right? Wasn't there a cross, a burning cross on your lawn? Absolutely. Yeah. The we just didn't know who did it, but we looked out and there was a cross. But and we were getting telephone calls hmm. uh, saying we'll burn your house down if you don't take your hat out of the race. So it was a very Well, how did you deal with time. that? I mean, that's very terrifying. Well, that, you know, it just made everybody angry, really. Mm. And it, I think it reinforced the desire to work for change. So the, the cross was scary, but it was also motivational. Mm. So this project took four years to finish, is that correct? Well, actually, the project started in 2000. 14. Wow. Yes. So you started gathering footage at that time? Yes, and we started doing, uh, yes, interviews. Mm. Yes. So the thing about the documentary, folks, is that when you watch it, you will see uh, archival photographs, some archival um, uh, footage of um, conferences and panel discussions. It's really hard to get like right. real footage, but there is some well, footage also from the film right. that shows us the uh, um, the firemen that come out and start hosing people down and, right. and, and so it's a real mix of archival right. footage right. And, with remembrances and I think that um, when you see the film it will paint a picture that uh, is terrifying but is also uplifting because of the way that the community deals with the issue right, right? they're able to transcend uh, the situation that that they're put in is it much better in infield now the community has changed a lot, mm. and certainly the leadership, the political, all, most all of the offices, the political office officials are black, but the town has suffered economically. It's not thriving. I see. The major industry moved away. Everybody moved away. Yes. That's too bad. Yes. I, I want to say that you must come and see or watch online this wonderful film. The Nine O'Clock Whistle is going to be playing with a short experimental film called The Dark Forest by Martin Del Caprio. And every program will have a short film or a couple of short films followed by a feature. And the opening night or opening day film uh, the nine o'clock whistle which is on September 10th 2021 um, you can get more information about the screening at our website which is njfilmfest.com and when you get to the home page you click on where it says New Jersey Film Festival fall 2021 schedule and usually everything would open up for you on that page but because we're doing a virtual component we are using Eventive as our streaming provider. There would be a link for you to click on that page, which will bounce you to our um, Eventive website that gives you all the information you need. So please join us. And I, I want to thank you both for joining us today. It was wonderful meeting you, and we look forward to showing your movie to our audiences. Thank Thanks you so much. much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. I wanted to do this for a long time because I knew that what we did in the 60s was significant, historical, and it needed to be recorded. So 100 years from now, or 50 years from now, if we don't write this story, believe me, the people of that day will never know what happened in Enfield between 1963 and 1965. Mm -hmm.